So I'm a physician assistant. I currently practice in Hamilton. I work in physiatry. Um, I work with one supervising physician in quite a busy physiatry practice, both at the Hamilton General and at McMaster. For those that aren't familiar, um, how is working with a PA similar or different than working with a resident? Yeah, so I, I think kind of describing us as permanent residents um, does have some truth to it. In the kind of early stages of your career, which I still consider that I'm in, uh, I've been working for two years, and our, our scope continues to broaden the more that you work in a specialty and with a specific supervising physician. So. Um, much like residents, we are able to see patients alongside the physician, we're reviewing cases, we're always engaged in education and learning. Mind you, residents are there for a very short amount of time and then they move on. So um, having a physician assistant in your practice is, is much like having that permanent resident and we're able to kind of cater to the clinic's needs specifically. So having worked with one supervising physician for the last two years, I've found that um, um, I've very much kind of uh, molded and kind of moved my practice in a way that will help um, the clinic, whether that's administration or seeing certain types of patients and taking kind of that workload and burden off of the physician. So the resident's often there to learn and uh, much like the resident, we're learning but we're also providing um, that kind of offload of work from the physician and taking uh, some of the patient load, some of the other workload off to allow them to provide um, kind of more quality care to their patients, but also have a better work-life balance in their practice. Any other benefits of adding a PA to a physiatry practice? So I, I think there are uh, a number of benefits for uh, any specialty that's looking at a physician assistant, specifically in physiatry, because it's so specialized and so um, busy, it's quite easy to integrate uh, the role of a PA into the clinic. So as I mentioned, I do kind of a number of different roles within our clinic, whether that's procedural, whether that's seeing new consults, seeing follow-ups, um, and that's able to offload the pressure on my supervising physician. So we work very well as a team and look at our day and say, okay, where can we, or what can we accomplish in this day and how can we make it beneficial for, for both of us for time management and efficiency. So I think that's really what a PA can offer is efficiency within the clinical uh, role. We have changed the way that clinics have ran since I've started. So whether that's changing the length of appointments or the number of patients that are being seen in a day or the type of patients that are being seen to allow the clinic to run a little bit smoother and allow my supervising physician to do the work that needs to be done during the, the day and not have to stay late afterwards. Provide um, kind of more quality care to their patients, but also have a better work-life balance in their practice. Any other benefits of adding a PA to a physiatry practice? So I, I think there are uh, a number of benefits for uh, any specialty that's looking at a physician assistant, specifically in physiatry, because it's so specialized and so um, busy, it's quite easy to integrate uh, the role of a PA into the clinic. So as I mentioned, I do kind of a number of different roles within our clinic, whether that's procedural, whether that's seeing new consults, seeing follow-ups, um, and that's able to offload the pressure on my supervising physician. So we work very well as a team and look at our day and say, okay, where can we, or what can we accomplish in this day and how can we make it beneficial for, for both of us for time management and efficiency. So I think that's really what a PA can offer is efficiency within the clinical uh, role. We have changed the way that clinics have ran since I've started. So whether that's changing the length of appointments or the number of patients that are being seen in a day or the type of patients that are being seen to allow the clinic to run a little bit smoother and allow my supervising physician to do the work that needs to be done during the, the day and not have to stay late afterwards. Do you do dictation, uh, medical documentation, medical legals, forms, return to work? Can you sort of describe the admin aspect of that? Yes, yeah, so essentially I've taken on kind of all of those things. So um, 
oftentimes I'm the, the one that's kind of liaising with patients or families or allied health care uh, team members to get things done like um, return to work forms or uh, disability forms and those types of things that is often kind of something that I take on to, to take that burden off of my supervising physician, um, which he quite enjoys because uh, as we know, forms are not the uh, the our favorite things to do but it is a way that a PA can be beneficial in their role and because I know the patients quite well it's often easy for me to fill out those forms or make the call to someone to you know figure out what needs to be done um, so I am doing quite a bit of that in clinic which kind of comes naturally when you do take on the patient load mm -hmm. and um, do you work with medical directives Yes, so I've implemented medical directives in uh, my place of work. So I was able to kind of pull from the current medical directives in different areas like ICU and uh, other outpatient locations to kind of make my own medical directives. So it was quite a process and took a number of months to implement. But now that they're there, it's um, very helpful to have that kind of written scope of practice to be able to refer back to both uh, in my ability to uh, um, do documentation within the clinic, but also order prescriptions, order diagnostic imaging, and those types of things. So everyone is aware of what I'm able to, to do, and it's in that document, so I find that helpful. Um, it sounds like you work primarily in outpatient, is that correct? Is, yes. there any, is it possible for PAs to work in inpatient or for EMG clinics, etc.? Yes, so um, I'm primarily outpatient based. We do do uh, kind of short stints of inpatient management on the spinal cord injury ward as well. I feel that a PA would be very beneficial on an inpatient uh, rehabilitation unit, whether that's with uh, spinal cord injury, brain injury, amputees and prosthetics. We could function much like um, uh, the kind of that point person for the ward. So uh, similar to an internal medicine PA or an orthopedic surgery PA where you're managing those inpatients and then liaising with the um, MRP, I think a PA would be very valuable in that role to allow to offload some of the burden on the physicians to be there every day and rounding on patients and managing all of the kind of medical comorbidities that come with certain rehabilitation diagnoses. So our patients are medically stable but they're often quite complicated and require a lot of work and management as well as um, following them through their rehab process and getting them discharged home in a safe and effective manner so I feel that a PA would be very useful um, kind of in that role and uh, what was your process for finding your first job so I did um, a longitudinal placement at the Regional Rehab Centre with a physiatrist. Um, we set up four half days and I ended up going for about eight half days because I was so interested and really enjoyed the clinical experience. It was in the amputee and prosthetic uh, kind of division at the Rehab Centre. And I then set up an elective at the Rehab Centre. So um, that was a four-week elective and I ended up working with uh, about seven different physiatrists. So I got experience on the acute brain injury ward, on the spinal cord injury ward, with amputees and prosthetics, with sports medicine, and general musculoskeletal medicine. So I got to know a number of the different practitioners there. And um, at the end of my elective, uh, essentially, one of the physiatrists approached me and said, you know, I'm interested in a PA. Is this something that you think we could talk about? Can you describe the particular practice setting that you're in? Yes, so I work with one supervising physician. Our practice focuses on a few different things. So we have a sport medicine kind of patient population where we're seeing high performing athletes on a regular basis. Then we see general musculoskeletal medicine. So. Um, Primarily, actually, we focus on hips. Uh, that's just where the kind of the practice has uh, led. We do a lot of hip injections, but also manage extra articular soft tissue uh, hip um, diagnoses. And then we'll see shoulders, elbows, ankles, kind of your, your general MSK presentations. We also do um, some inpatient work on the spinal cord injury unit. That happens about three to four months of the year. So I find that really interesting and rewarding. And we do spasticity clinic for our patients with spinal cord injury, cerebral palsy, other neurodegenerative disorders, and we do Botox injections and other um, allied healthcare team management for those patients. How would you describe your role as a PA in this practice? 
Yeah, so my role is quite dynamic. Um, depending on the day, I'm doing different things in clinic. So I will see both new consults and follow-up patients. Um, for a new consult, I will typically um, see them, review all of the imaging, do a physical exam, come up with an assessment and plan, and then review with my supervising physician. So the patient gets to meet him and um, kind of review what we had talked about. If there's any further questions, they're able to ask us at that time. In terms of follow-up patients, um, I tend to know the patients quite well, so I'm seeing many follow-ups that we've either done intervention for and we want to see how that's going a few months later, or follow-ups from diagnostic imaging and reviewing that with the patients and again, coming up with a plan and reviewing with the team what the options are. Um, I do uh, interventions as well, so I'm doing ultrasound-guided injections. We have specific injection days where we see many patients, um, and so I've... Uh, added that to my scope of practice after working with Dr. and being trained by him as well as others who are doing these types of procedures. So become quite comfortable with ultrasound guided procedures and um, I enjoy that part of the practice. Uh, otherwise, I'm kind of managing patient flow throughout the clinic. I'm liaising with the allied health team a lot of the time and trying to kind of provide that comprehensive care for our patients. Oftentimes I get feedback that the patients enjoy kind of seeing me because we get to spend a lot of time together and talk about their options and they often feel that things have been explained quite well whether it was you know I went through a model of the knee and showed them exactly where their injury was or wrote down the plan for them to go home with which um, I enjoy giving that to the patients and having them leave feeling good about their appointment. And how were you first oriented to the service? Uh, so my onboarding process was pretty um, quick. Because I had done an elective there, it actually was quite a, a seamless transition. I knew how the hospital worked um, from the administration side. I knew kind of what clinic flow looked like. So day one was kind of uh, just uh, up and running. And then after the first couple of months, you know, I I kind of settled into my role and figured out where I could be beneficial to the clinic and to my supervising physician. And we continue to make changes in the clinic in terms of how things are organized and what type of role I'm having. So I would say every four to six months we meet and come up with kind of next steps in terms of what we want to accomplish with my role specifically and review what has been going well and what we still need to work on. <music>